Katya is my dear friend who I met here in the animation industry through networking and we've become actual real life friends and I think the world of her she's brilliant and confident and draws really really fantastic things has a great color sense uh Katya will you tell everybody kind of what your concept studio glow in the dark does yeah, um, so we're a small studio that does intellectual property for animation and we focus on serialized content. Uh, what that means is we create stories from scratch and all the art and like character packages and then we compile them on a pitch bible and then we go around the world and then we pitch our stories and then we just try to find uh, studios that want to buy it and produce it and we just collaborate with like a lot of people around the world which is really fun. That's kind of a dream. So like someone could come to you and be like, I have an idea for a show about a dog who juggles, but I don't know how to draw, but I want it to be an animated thing. Can you make it a pitch? Like <laughs> that's yeah, maybe like amplification. Yeah. Yeah, no, we, we totally do that uh, for clients. So we have like all kinds of clients that have like great ideas that either they don't know how to format their story or they need like some sort of support, even if it's like writing or art wise. Mm -hmm. uh, so we help them uh, build their stories and so they can like put it out and find like clients. And sometimes we just find like great people that we want to work with and we're just like, oh, I like you and your ideas. And uh, we both like this thing. Uh, let's make a story together. So we do like a lot of that as well. And then beyond um, running the studio, you also are an artist, right? You still do your own art? Yes, I do. I do like do like that. all of like the whole thing. Um, yeah, I do paint at home, um, like just to relax. And it's mostly like then watercolors and acrylics. Uh, but most of my work at the studio is digital, just because it's like time consuming. Yeah, I get that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the same when I'm painting at home for myself, it's usually traditional. And then when it's something for a professional client, it's digital because that's yeah. the sort of world we live in. Or for our shows, because I mean, when we do our yeah. shows, like I really like this, like this, yes, an excuse to do like, like, um, handwork because I don't do that yeah. anymore that much. No, I know. I love a chance to work with traditional media. I'm pretty lucky because I get to do that a fair bit more, I think, than most people working in our, our realm, but um it's always a treat the smell of paint still smells good to me yeah. <laughs> not that you should sit and, and sniff it but but, but it I like it's you know. comforting yeah when you yeah our pencil, so many shaving. Years. pencil shaving smell all warm and woody and nice mm -hmm. so guys um uh and as for myself if you guys don't know who i am i do illustration and design i work with disney publishing i work with a number right. of different clients doing cute retro stuff and i do a lot of my own um things so i've just managed to eke a living out of drawing various things <laughs> i mostly cute girls um so katya mm -hmm. has networking been important to your career and if so how 200 percent, yes <laughs> like yeah. very 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 important i feel like Regardless, I went to like school and I was really lucky to have like art education. Like I feel like I do it really learn um, a lot of the things that I know today and they're very applicable to my job from the people I met. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I got um, extremely lucky to just be a social animal and mm -hmm. be able to like... Were you naturally social in school? Did it come easy to you? Uh, in school, it was, our center was like a really hard school. Um, it is really hard to make friends um, mm -hmm. because they have like a really, really high volume of work. However, they did have some friends, but the most friends uh, I've made and most of my network um, is out of socializing in, uh, you meet one person and you go to a birthday party and then you meet other people. Yeah. Now you're having coffee and now you're meeting in other people. So I'm like, not very good at that, but I'm Spanish, and so I'm just kind of used to that. <laughs> well, and I think that that's a very natural way of networking. Yeah. Um, I think when I came in, when I started aiming myself at the animation industry, my concept of networking was people in business casual, standing around hors d'oeuvre trays in a gray room, very solemnly exchanging cards. Um, but networking can also look like going to a friend's birthday party and meeting someone who's really cool and does awesome stuff and you're like, hey, you do awesome stuff and I want to do that kind of thing. Do you want to work together on something or talk more about it? Yeah, that's like, hey friend, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes it is like, hello, let's be friends. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, like with you and me, it was like, hello, you're really cool. I like your art. And then sometime later, it was just like, hey, we should hang out. Yeah. We like a lot of the same stuff. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and like, uh, and it can be formal. I have had formal networking as well, where you're mm -hmm. in, you know, um, a convention and you're talking very intentionally with someone who does what you want to do or right. who is a publisher and you have a book you want to get published. And then it's a very clear, like, hey, I am yeah. talking to you for professional reasons. But so often it's also just meeting cool people mm -hmm. and, and, taking a chance to share with them like what you care about and then you find out they care about that too right you know? yeah i don't think of my network as like numbers or assets of like okay i have 50 friends and five of them work at these top studios so if i need a job i can tap into that and like yeah you can you know your your professional network right. your friends will be there for you but i don't like treat them like a, a job bank you know? Right. Yeah. Like, or like a, like a future, like skills acquiring, like something yeah. you love in the future. Like you can give it to me for sure. Cause I need, yeah. them. like, mm, not really. No. Yeah. Cause I feel like sometimes in school, um, the idea about networking is like, just like get in with someone and then get them to hire you. That's not how everyone teaches it, but that was right. some of what I was receiving in terms of messaging about how you do oh networking. definitely yes yeah it's yeah. always like a skill straight like oh you give me this yeah. and i give you that and you're like oh god but uh here's the thing guys if you do that poorly and awkwardly people um feel used and won't want to yeah. hang out with you and won't want to help you get a job i've i've been on the receiving end of this now that i'm a little further along coming into the industry like i thought oh yeah i'm a freelancer used to be you know, a dreaded response, right? Because I, I am a freelancer and now I'm proud of it and I'm fine with it and I'm happy with my life. Oh, I love freelancing. Yeah, and that's the thing, it's afforded me the opportunity to do like these interesting toy projects and my own projects and to sit at home and paint with my dolls and I, a lovely, beautiful life um, with so much promise for the future as well. But I used to be all about, well, I just want to work on Disney movies. And even then, I only just want to work on the musical princess ones. Everything else is dead to me. Um, but yeah, now I know that there's so much more out there than just the big studio jobs I wanted when I started. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel like I need to, um, like, hitch my star to someone's wagon so that they can, like, sneak me in the gate you know because yeah. that's that's a pretty transparent thing to do um I feel and, kind of like i feel like yeah. the great thing going to what you're uh, jumping on like the great thing about like networking uh, that like really helped me is so i was in school and then they were like oh those are the jobs that you can have but like by networking and meeting other people that were doing different things it was like oh my god why do i want to study a job if i could be working on all right. these like cool projects that like everybody's working on nobody's really talking about and yeah. i i felt like through networking like I learned about like this other let's say obscure because nobody really talk about those jobs but I think they should be like enlightened because they're like really really fun um yeah like one of my favorite freelance jobs that I got like out of like networking it was like somebody was like oh well I'm doing this trailer do you want to do like color keys for it I was like wait what like Wait, if I, was, I love doing you know, color keys like yeah exactly like I would never have gotten that job but like all of a sudden I was working for a studio in Bulgaria and they were like yeah like we just need you to do all the color case I'm like woohoo <laughs> so yeah. yeah and I have to say something that you say is like really important about networking is like it's not like forcing relationships it's like really trying to have like a very genuine connection with the person and uh, try to discover like the same way like if you I don't know go in a cafe and you meet somebody yeah. and you try to see if you have like something in common much rather than trying to find like forcefully oh you like this to me too or like oh, oh yeah, you work in this thing that. like I like this thing and you're like no but like try to get to know them as, as people you know and then the things will come but um, yeah but yeah yeah um so I have another topic I wanted to talk about related to networking. Yeah. Um, when you were starting out, when you were maybe still in school or realized you wanted to be an artist, did, did the idea of networking ever intimidate you? And if it did, or, or did it seem distasteful to you? Uh, if it seemed intimidating or distasteful, how did you overcome that? 
So yeah, I, I came here and uh, I didn't talk English very well to begin with. But second of all, I didn't have any French, right? Um, mm -hmm. So the first time I heard the word networking, I got really overwhelmed because it was like, oh my God, like I don't even know how to like communicate to a basic human level with somebody. <laughs> how the hell am I gonna <laughs> like network? <laughs> Um, so I decided to put like networking on vacations for a little bit and do what I do best. It's just like get to know people in a personal level. Um, I just, just don't really care about like networking. Like I'm that person that, like you could have a very famous person in front of me and it will be that idiot that doesn't know who that person is. And mm -hmm. I feel like that always play in favor, uh, because then I can like talk to people. I like. My favorite person with people is like, so what did you do yesterday? What you eat today? Like you, just those questions. Yeah. And then just like try to get who is this person? So I feel like all the friends uh, I met in the beginning, um, it was because like we clicked as a friend and then we kind of grow our careers together and we help um, our careers together. And then, and then eventually later I understood what their working was and I kind of used it more like in conventions when I was trying to like approach a certain studio and things like this. Uh, but I always try to keep uh, the human interaction that's been working really well for me because I, I feel like when somebody comes and like asks my resume, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I can really go on Google and check it. Like if you if you really care about my work, like you will. And if you're here talking yeah. to me, ask me as, like, who am I? Um, like ask me things that you cannot yeah. find basically like i really don't like it when people ask me for credentials or or if they like up and ask me how many followers i have right off the bat and just like is that how you like tell whether i'm worth your time like is that important that? like is that an interview like are you like gonna yeah have, like you like, can look that up if you want to know that yeah exactly um, and it sounds really bad but like but it is true like with the internet era like we we all can look at each other's like golds and medals like right. online you don't have to spend like precious like in facetime yeah <laughs> affirming I, those to, um to answer my own question networking mm -hmm. was really 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 intimidating to me when i was in school it was something i dreaded that i knew i would have to do because my teachers told me so but i got this pit in my stomach every time i mm -hmm. thought about it um, because I'm kind of shy and for the first couple of years I would go to a, a mixer or mm -hmm. I'd make myself go to like a women in animation mixer or a CTN event or something at Nucleus and then I would just cry in the car afterwards because I was so nervous like and I had all that feeling but it makes you very vulnerable, to be honest. Like, yes! You know? People ask what do you do and I'm like, nothing. Like, <laughs> I promise. Yeah, I'm like, I draw. Um, and eventually I started to have answers to those questions, but the first year or two was like me calling my mom and being like, now what I do, but I don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so the way I overcame that was, I have two different um, tactics or methods that I use to, to deal with networking. The first and most important is looking at people as people and really trying to get to know them uh, understanding that they might be feeling nervous and maybe I can help them feel more included in the group. Mm -hmm. um, being genuinely curious about what they do because we are so fortunate as artists to be surrounded by some of the most interesting people who all are working on interesting things, who love stories, who love art, who love to talk about their favorite dorky Disney movie or, yeah. or anime. You know, <laughs> it's, it's fun to just engage with people as like, hey, we're just a bunch of nerds. You know, that's really all professional artists are, is we're professional mm -hmm. enthusiasts at whatever we are. And we've gotten to a point where we can create it at a professional level. Be respectful. Obviously, if someone's, you know, a much higher position than you and they're swamped with people, that might not be a great time to go up and talk about your favorite movies. Yeah. And then the second way is when I have to do very formal networking, like I'm going to a mixer at at Comic-Con that's all Scholastic authors and you know I'm there as an illustrator person and it's clearly everyone's there for business. Um, then I just pretend I'm in a play and I pretend that I am performing my favorite version of myself mm -hmm. and I step out of my own skin and I just put on like stage Casey face and it's right. I sort of di disassociate my true self from my my public self um, because I'm an introvert and that's how I have to do it mm -hmm. if I'm gonna do it and I'm just like on you know
<laughs> and I give my business card and I'm very polite and I ask them nice questions and you know um that's kind of how I get around that I just I literally go back to my theater kid days and I pretend I'm playing a part and it helps. but that's like going back to what you say like I think you say something like very important is it like if you're if you get nervous about like like formal like networking i mean nobody really likes those yeah uh, but i think yeah like like it just it's just like awkward for everybody even the famous person or like yeah. the person like everybody want to talk to like even for them is really important so if it's really important if if it makes you really um uncomfortable or if you know um what to do with it that you have like questions prepared like not like a bombarding yeah. like amount of questions but like you know one question that like is a personal question like let's say how are you how is the convention for you you know another yeah. question you that's like something in common the convention yeah like, exactly any panels yeah know? oh when you arrive like something that like it gets you like like formal chit chat and then you know have like a one question or two that's kind of but you really, really want to ask them, like, if you only have, like, five minutes um, to talk to this person, like, what is it that you want to say? And then have, like, an ending, like, oh, thank you so much for your time. Or, like, what are you going to do after this? Or, like, just, like, out of, like, a, again, yeah. like, another, like, personal Or if you've all thing. traveled, you can wish them, you know, a good trip yeah. home. Yeah, exactly. You know? Or, like, or, or have or, a great rest of the convention or, or something like that. Yeah, something like that. That, like, have, like, not like thank you, goodbye, like something like, you know, like more personal. And yeah, don't answer with thanks, bye. <laughs> yeah. And what you say is really important too before that it's, it's be mindful of like, like status schools or like people. Like, you know, if somebody seems tired, of course, you have the right to ask your question, but also maybe this person has been asking, like, answering questions for like, yeah 24 hours yeah trying to put yourself in their shoes yeah exactly um so i feel like like it's important to read like oh is this a good time to have like a real conversation or it's just like better just to say hello um how are you like i will love this or you had a great talk um hope yeah. you enjoy the festival and then if you see them again more relaxed and it's like oh hi again friend question right? <laughs> Moving on a little bit from the idea of feeling overwhelmed by networking and finding ways to deal with that. To be more um, normal. <laughs> are there any guiding principles that you use in networking, any kind of a moral code or general rules that you employ when you're out and about networking in the professional world? Yes, I and this is gonna sound really weird but they never make it about networking. Like, as I say, like mm -hmm. my favorite questions is like, how are you? What did you eat yesterday? Mm -hmm. Like weird things like, like that, that like breaks the eyes. And I, what I feel is like, if somebody likes you in a personal level, you will have more chances in the future to ask the question that you want. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's more important to just like, make like a genuine, yeah, like, like just like talk about like random things and just like see if we have something connecting and then eventually that human connection yeah exactly like i i rarely or like i i can't even say like a single time that i was like oh like you work at this place like can you remove a portfolio like i never ever yeah. that because i that feels like well i'm really shy about showing my work and i'm me too like and i feel like i need to be in a very like mindset and if it's of course if it's a portfolio review that's a different situation but like um like I would never put out my phone in a party and be like, this is my work. I would like, <laughs> I'm like super embarrassed of my work. Like yeah. I never shy, like I never sign it. Like I never, um, you should never do this, but like this is how I do. So I would be I, like to share pictures of my cat than of my art. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, I always feel like, yeah, I, I never do networking in the, following the networking guidelines that people suggest for me. It's always like, yeah. I imagine so, I'm Yeah, for those of you who are in school, there are alternative ways to maybe the ways your teachers are encouraging you to network. Yep. Um, don't feel like you have to be pushed into a mold where it's like, yeah. hello, I am this person. I do this, this, and that. Would you look at my work now? Can I have a job? Don't don't do that. <laughs> it's it's wrong. Um, as for me, I just use the golden rule. I try to treat people the way I would want to be treated. I try to imagine what sort of a headspace they're in, and that changes based on the situation. If they're having a show opening, I want to come up to them and congratulate them on their show opening because they're probably exhausted and maybe nervous and they put a lot into this. And I don't, and it's not a good time for me to ask them for a favor, you know? Right. 
<laughs> um, or if they're the new person coming into the room and you can kind of tell that they're nervous and I know some people, I might wave them over and introduce them to the group and try to get them connected, you know, because that's what I would want. Yeah. You know, so just the basic treating other people the way I would hope to be treated has gotten me really, really far. It's paid off professionally, but more than that, it's allowed me to to navigate this professional world that can be so cutthroat, mm -hmm. um, but to navigate it in a way where I feel like at the end of the day, I can sleep at night. I can respect who I am. I know that I've at least tried my best. And and you and I talked about this a bit before the chat opened up, but you do sometimes make missteps and mistakes with people. Like I have made embarrassing social mistakes while networking, where like maybe I got really excited about an idea and I just barreled ahead with it without asking anybody or thinking about how other people might feel about it. And then later I found out that it like, hurt their feelings to step on their toes and that wasn't my intent yeah but then I had to like do some apologizing it's like oh now that I hear it that way it sounds bad I I wasn't looking at it that way and just know that like mistakes will happen and you may have to apologize you might have to you know let things sit for a while to smooth over but you can overcome those you know like no oh, definitely I'll forgive you <laughs> yeah <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes and you can't And if they don't, to... like whatever, you don't want it to be yeah. friends anyway. Like... But you can't expect to go through your whole career and never offend anybody on accident. But when yeah. you do, just, just be a nice person about just it. Apologize. If you're, you're wrong, you know, yeah. and try to make amends and try to care about the other person's feelings genuinely and not just care about like protecting, saving face, you know, protecting yeah. yourself. So I guess, I guess what I'm trying to get at, or what we're both trying to say is we know guys artists we are artists we know you might not have all of the social skills often artists are shy I and either. often we forget names or make social faux pas um it will not cripple your career as long as you uh apologize when you yeah. need to make a joke uh, okay. if it's awkward you know and just try to do right by people yep um because i have known people who got an kind of early and they were trying to play this game where they were trying to mean talk and like um undermine people who they saw as competition and simultaneously like kiss up to people who they thought could help them it didn't go well everyone saw through it and no one liked them and no one and people talk to work with about them. Too. Yeah. Like, don't yeah people talk. talk about you if you're the people that gossips about the other people. yeah oh and that uh, now well, on the topic of gossip uh don't <laughs> You know, don't gossip. It's like, I, I sometimes fail in this regard, but I really try to catch myself. Um, I try to practice positive gossip. If anything, I try to only say nice things about other people, genuine nice things. If someone just had a success, I try to mention it to someone else. If I was just thinking how awesome a person is at like, like, wow, the texture they get in their digital paintings is so good and it's only gotten better. And like, how are they doing that? I'll mention it to someone. But like, if you're tempted to dunk on somebody because it feels fun Done. in the short term, it will come back to bite you. Don't yep. do it. Like, worth, and never worth it. <laughs> and that doesn't mean you have to like everybody because no, sometimes I get asked about that. people like I, I dislike very much, but I'm exactly but like i'm always like you know what these people are not my cup of tea um yeah, but they can be your cup of tea and this is totally okay like it's just not my kind of a people that's it yeah but it can be really tempting if your friends are getting together and someone did something that that you guys don't like to be like oh this person nah, nah, yeah nah. um just when you sense that kind of happening don't give in to that just pull back and be like would i want them to talk that way about me Probably yeah. not, you know. Yeah, um, yeah it, cause it comes around, you know, it's, it comes around. Someone's asking, are there different rules for networking online? That's an interesting question. Katya, you want to respond? Um, I think they're the same. I think the problem with like networking online is like, you don't have to, you, you can make the mistake of like trying to be somebody else or trying to be more perfect mm -hmm. or trying to craft this person that you are not. And then when people, there is this danger, then, then you meet somebody, you connect very well, you, you meet and then, you know, your flaws are there for everybody to yeah. see. Um, and that sometimes it can be like, 
you know, if you're that person that you build yourself really high and then you're aware of your own limitations, you can be embarrassed and it can be really hard to overcome that thing. And I feel like for me, it's like, just be equally genuine and don't try too hard to impress people. Like, you know, yeah. do what like what's right for you. And it's okay I'm to like, share, you know, yeah, if exactly. it's appropriate, you can share a link to something you're proud of. Um, but you don't have to brag, you know? Yeah, and if there's like something that like it doesn't feel like natural to you, like I I always heard these people like, oh, if you want to have like mm, hundred followers more, that you should go and comment on like two hundred people and this. I hate people. that kind of like I hate that thing. Like if you're not the yeah. kind of person that like I'm the kind of person that like never knows what to say in social media. So unless I have something like a very I use a lot of emojis because I'm like ah, I don't know what to say a lot. Yeah, like <laughs> unless I, I really see something that like things. gets me and I I yeah. comment it, then I I do it because I feel it's genuinely like yeah sure like yesterday for example I'm reading this book that's like it's very interesting and I'm like it came out of nowhere I'm like wow like have so much knowledge and for a personal um reason it's not art related and I found uh the person on Instagram uh, and I just sent them a message like hey I just found your book thank you for putting this book this is amazing did and they reply no I don't think they follow their account but they may say four months oh. later and I still yeah. like you know, I, it doesn't matter. I did it because I, I wanted to tell them that, like, they did a great job and, and I felt, like, really touched for their book, um, period. Like, I'm not, like, trying to push anything else out of it. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I would say it. when networking online, you can take the same approach of, hey, fellow artist, person who likes similar things that I like, I saw your thing and liked it, if it's genuine, only if mm -hmm. it's genuine. And um, I was thinking of doing this thing. Would you want to collaborate with me on that? Maybe that's a little too much for a first meeting. Um, no. But you can still come in with a very conversational, casual tone. Um, you know, keep it appropriate. If you're talking to an upper level CEO, don't make it so casual. But if it's just another artist, just talk casually. Uh, the biggest tip I would give for networking online is keep it short. Do not write big, long emails because like when I get a multi-paragraph email in my inbox out of nowhere, um, I might really want to respond to it, but it's now become work. It's now become like a solid half hour of work that I have to schedule in. So if you can keep it to five lines or less for your first email, there will be future emails, hopefully. I would say the biggest tip is keep it brief. And also just generally, Go for it. Feel free to reach out to people. If you saw someone's post and it really moved you, let them know. You know, go ahead and send them a conversation on Instagram. Don't be pushy. If they don't reply, it might be because they don't have time. Yeah. It's okay to try one more time if you think maybe they just didn't get to it yet or didn't see it. But beyond that, I would just let it be because you don't know what pressures they have on them. For me, like, I'm going to do the devil's advocate. I'm like a completely different, I come from a completely different angle and I think it's good to have like different opinions. But yeah, and I want to get different opinions. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. So I think that's why it's going to be very interesting because I am the person that sends three paragraphs. And the reason, oh, okay. <laughs> the reason why I do it is because I never write anything. And the one person that I get the courage on writing in, I feel like I have to over explain myself, which I don't have to, but I just have to. Yeah. And then I usually what I do is I write what I want to say on my notes. And then I start shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. Yeah, and editing. It is like one paragraph and a half, <laughs> but it was five before. So I feel like really confident with it. But on the other hand, because I know I do this when people send me paragraphs, um, it may take me like a week to read it, but I do read it and then I do appreciate um, when I get a little bit of background of like, who are you and why are you struggling with this? So it gives me more tips. How can I help you? It doesn't yeah. have to send me like a Christmas letter, but I, I do think because the kind of inquiries I get, they're always very, you know, if somebody asks me like can you give me a like portfolio review uh i'm like uh, well like what do you want to do right so i appreciate yeah, I that information that. yeah it's exactly like i appreciate the information is already in there so i don't have to be like a police like so what do you want to do like where do you want to go do you want to do to be your film <laughs> you know like <laughs> yeah like i feel like like oh um but again but uh, i would say my first email would be more of an inquiry like hey yeah. would you mind giving me a portfolio review and then maybe you give them one or two lines of context and then if they say yes then you can send them a big email that's kind of how i tend to operate yeah, no exactly and that's and that but that's the bottom of the line too is like like know who are you going to message 
and know yeah. what kind of interactions they are you know like like it's a person that gets like a kajillion like if it's a person they have like thousand millions followers chances are they get like thousand millions uh, messages per day right. or a short message is like more appropriate if it's a person that have like uh, 500 followers right i'm sure this person is gonna be more engaging in a kind of like longer yeah. conversation chances are like you're gonna you're gonna have more room to explain because they get like less uh messages so you gotta right. Read the cues too. Yeah, and, and take cues from the length of response that they give to you. Yes. When I was young, I connected with Ron Clements and John Musker because they directed my favorite movie, The Little Mermaid, and I was in high school and I wanted to work at Disney. And so I would write them like big paragraphs and they would write back two lines. Yes. And I never got the hint. Now that I'm a professional and I only have time to write two lines, now I'm like, oh, gee, oh, I'm sorry, Ron and John. I was dense. I kept writing yeah. these big fat paragraphs like, oh, you're so amazing. Oh, I wrote a paper about you and I just want to do this because my heart is calling me, which is all good stuff and true, but I probably could have edited that out. Yes. You know, <laughs> yep, yep, yep. if I had taken the time and thought about their lives and how every you know moment of their day at that time because they were working on treasure planet how yeah. every moment of their day was scheduled you know and they didn't have the free time to sit down and you know write a gushing email the way i had <laughs> yeah no, and the other thing too is like don't feel entitled to an answer just because you put the time yeah. to ask somebody like a long difficult question like don't feel like you they owe you or like an answer they they don't right. really like even if they never answer like I always think like if you have a question, go ahead and, and like ask it. The worst can happen is that they say no or they don't answer, but you already yeah. have that. No, so you know, yeah. like they if they answer you, like be thankful for their time and all that because I mean you don't, they don't owe you anything. Right. You are the Even one if you're the biggest fan them. of them and you bought all their stuff. Yeah, it's like that's on you. You went crazy on that, yeah. like yeah. you know. Because you can sometimes feel close to a person and it can be kind of a one sided thing if you're consuming yeah. your work. You have this kind of parasocial relationship because you feel like you know them because you watched all their videos, or watched all their movies, or you know, followed all their posts. Um, just mm -hmm. yeah, just be aware that that yep. no one really owes you anything. <laughs> Yeah, 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 unless someone literally owes you money and then they owe you whatever. And then you owe. that's a big right game. Though. Yeah, that's you know. But like, no one owes you an answer. I also want to say that I am proud of you all who are putting your stuff out there. I know yes. how hard it is. It is so necessary, and also it is so necessary to do the networking thing, to do the community building thing. Yep. But I, I hope that you can be encouraged from us to you that mm -hmm. it's worth it and that you can still be yourself and still be a good person and you can be shy and awkward and make mistakes and still make it work for you, you know? I would really hope you own it so you can tell us the tricks that you're using. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, we're still learning, obviously. I <laughs> exactly. This is learning. like like a learning process for everybody, really. Yeah, and for me, it's also like a coping process. Like, it can only take so much attention at once. So I have to, like, have waves of being more visible, less visible, you know? Yep. <laughs> but Katya, thank you so much for doing this with me. I so appreciate you thanks and your time. Thanks for having me. Your... And thanks, thanks yeah. everybody for, like, putting this together and everybody for, like, yeah. like, coming and listening to us and your wonderful questions. So, yeah, thank you. I guess I'll just close by saying... Be excellent to each other. Be good people. You know, yeah. it'll come back to you. And take the scary step of putting yourself out there and keep doing it. Yeah. Um, sometimes don't think it too much. Happen. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah. And don't think too much about it. Yeah. And if someone has 100,000 followers and you have 100, do not let that stop you from sharing your art. Your art yep. is still important and valid. And the only way to move forward is just to keep making things and putting it out there. And and we all have different journeys, you know, like some people yeah, that too. Like, like walk faster and some people learn to walk a little bit slower and it's totally fine. Yeah. And some people, um, you know, have a, a big high at the beginning of their career, but some people that come later and don't um, negatively compare yourself to other people because it's not productive. It wastes valuable art making energy. Yeah. Know? Yep. 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 Yeah. But thank you so much for being with me here, Katya. Thank you. you. Bye-bye! <laughs> Bye!